with various levels of success, timing is important in that the universe will offer it to you to you freely when it knows you are ready for it. Oh, so true. Right? My friend. Hello, my friend. Joe Abood. Been a long time. I know, it has been. Yeah. How are you today? Excellent. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, mate. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, you know, some time out of a, a busy schedule. So um, that's the first thing I wanted to say. You're, you're a busy man and um, I've been looking forward to this for a while. So thanks for your time. Mate, thank you for having me. And you know what I'm like. I'd rather have these conversations than work, you know, yeah. because if you don't know how to deal with this stuff, then yeah. work becomes almost uh, futile, right? It's so true. I was just saying to someone, I really, the older I become, the more passionate I become of, you know, of, of all of these sorts of things. And when I say these sorts of things, some of the things we're going to talk about and um, spirituality and and awareness and, and business and growth and creativity, it's just, um, they're just the great discussions. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're on top of all of those topics, I think, you, you know, your, your achievements and your business become a whole lot better, yeah. a whole lot more fruitful. Yep. You know, you start to do a hell of a lot better at what you do because you're kind of doing the things you love and enjoy doing yeah. once you once you come to that place, right? You certainly, and look, for the listeners, we've known each other for, for 25 years in starting out in, in Parramatta together. And you had uh, Joe Boot Architects and I was at Moxham Real Estate and you used to ring up the phone and, and ask if I had any options and... Nothing's changed really in that context. <laughs> Still, <laughs> 25 years later, Jeff hasn't gotten me an option and he doesn't believe in them, right? So A lot else has changed. That's um, all good. Yeah, look, both, you know, had, had, um, had great journeys and, and ups and downs along the way and I'm keen to chat to you about, you know, a few different things today. So for the listeners, a bit of an intro about yourself in, in terms of, you know, your owner and CEO of, of, of Trafalgar Property and, you know, your passions and, and how you have got to where you are today. Was it, was it a vision that you've always had? Have you worked towards something? Has it, you know, t- tell us a little bit about your journey. Originally, I've um, my, my, my company Trifalga, which is, uh, was made up as opposed to Trafalga that you see on a Monopoly board or in, in, in the UK. Trifalga is um, a name that was made um, with a combination of my children's, um, the first two letters of each of my children's names. Mm-hmm. So T-R-I is Tristan, that's my youngest son. Um, F-A is my daughter's name, Faith. Um, L is for love in the, in the middle of all that. And mm. G-A is my, young, uh, my middle son, my eldest son, uh, Gabe. So, Beautiful. you know, I, I was looking to rebrand after I'd, um, you know, been practicing and running uh, an architectural practice for a very long time, as you know, yep. um, which is basically where a lot of my knowledge comes in the, in the development and the property space. It was originally consulting making a lot of people a lot of money and then mm. um, I decided to sort of take that on board and, and sort of get into the property game myself. Mm. Um, you know, and I, I was consulting for 25 odd years um, and then, you know, it just sort of uh, grew into this, this property uh, family office at the moment that is a solutions-based business mm. that really looks at um, solutioning, you know, troubled sites, um, repositioning assets, um, you know, through 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 planning, through really, you know, clever planning um, ideas and processes, and you know, it, at times it's finding anomalies in things. It's, yep. You know, it's it's different in its approach, right? Do you think that's for the, for the people listening? And look, your that's a real niche for you, and you're you're very good at that, and mm-hmm. seeing things and creating things out of you know what could be nothing to the normal eye. Do you think that's a skill that can be taught, or do you think it's a knack? Look, I think I think it's a combination of um, building enough knowledge in an industry that gives you um, or creates a knowing. So when you become really good at, at any discipline, in my opinion, to the to the to the to the young guys out there listening, I think you need to be awesome at what you do, mm. right? So I, I think, and this advice I give to every employee that I employ, the very last thing I tell somebody when I've I've decided that I may consider them as, a, as an employee in our business, is I always tell them, I'll give you one bit of advice, and it's make yourself irreplaceable. And they'll say, what do you mean? And I'll say, well, look, 
you become so good at what you do that I don't have a choice but to meet your demands. At that point, I believe, and you know, I've, I've spoken about this with you before, I think, you know, as a leader, leading or leadership is empowerment, you know. Mm. And so without getting back off topic, because I can just digress really easy, mm. I think I think the takeaway here is become awesome at what you do. Yep. Become the very best at what you do. Yep. And my uncle once told me, he said, stick to one thing long enough and you'll be the best. Yeah. Because what happens in time is things fall away, people leave the industry, you know, people leave countries, you know, all sorts of um, external influences um, basically move people along. But if you stick to something long enough, and just make sure you love doing it, because I think I think that's really important. So important. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, that's 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 the takeaway I would give. You know, just just be awesome at it. And the benefits of that is, you know, you, you love it, you, you you dominate it, and 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 good things come of that. Um, can I ask you, Joe, in your so we, we, as as I mentioned, we've known each other a long time, and in recent years, really gone from sort of strength to strength with Trafalgar and some deals that you've done. Mm-hmm. And um, like any career, and and like mine, and like everyone, there's you know there's there's moments of glory, and there's moments of things that you get battle scars from and you you remember and you you learn from those from in in the development industry for someone that doesn't understand it like we do what's it what's something that you could share with the audience about something that you've learned that you know that that you've learned from that maybe hasn't been a success look um i'm going to start with a moxium Right. How's that, right? A moxism. Oh, moxism. Is that what you call it? Okay, a moxism. So a moxism, from, from, from my perspective, is you know a, a little quote I like to use, and I think everybody needs to take note of that, is through your uncertainty, you will find certainty, mm. right? So what do I mean by that? So you know, through all the difficult times that you will go through, you'll have your ups, you'll have your downs. In my opinion, you have a lot more downs than ups, if you were to measure every single step of the way as you as you as you traverse through your 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 um your 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 goals and 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 through your journey to success and success defined completely different with every human being you know that's on the planet right and so what might be success to you may be completely different to me mm. and that's okay too mm. and you know i'll start by saying it's okay to fail i think through your failures you 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 those battle scars that you spoke about and prepare you for 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 mm. success mm. because without those battle scars you can't be successful mm. it also helps you appreciate success because let me tell you that with success comes a lot of responsibility and that responsibility is serious in that when you become successful it's not just about making a lot of money or it's not it's not just about you know being the leader in your industry or becoming a um, a change maker or all of those things i think it were a combination of those things but having the ability to maintain the success mm. after a period of time without losing your sense of self is key to longevity and success. And success. Brilliant. You know what I mean? Because like, it's easy, right? We've all got egos. Mm. But before you know it, right, you make a whole heap of money and then you go out on the spend and you yep. go out on the drink and then, yep. you know, you start to sort of get ahead of yourself. And and that's 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 just... A natural part of success in in a way some people get too far ahead of themselves i mean how many people do you know that were really successful and have nothing now yeah you know um and i never forget all that yeah you know um, i come from a family where that happened a few times yeah and then we ended up with not much yeah but that was the very thing that motivated me i guess i I was going to say and back to what the part of the question i i was trying to ask was so i think yeah that's that's part of the motivation and that sort of that you obviously had a vision for you know for success and you wanted to achieve do you think it's you know your vision was what you're doing now or do you think the vision was has it been a different journey do you think for for you and the, the success the, <clears throat> to the success that you've made today yeah look I'm look I've always had a vision of success I've come to learn that not to identify too too heavily with you know a a a specific idea of success as such so what do i mean by that like aim for success and whatever that definition is for you but i think stay a little bit fluid to the various possibilities that could make mm. you successful mm. so that's just you know one thing i wouldn't do when you're planning and look you know another another um little saying is you know if you fail to plan you plan to fail mm. you can have a plan in place i think 
not being rigid is important to the to to easier success or a quicker success because when you're too rigid you you try to um, foresee exactly the path yeah no, know that there is a path yeah understand that you will you will you will eventually walk the path of success but don't dictate the path yeah, so that don't way force it. At le- yeah at least at least you sort of like you know you 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 leave you're leaving stuff to you know some change and some meandering and yeah. that's okay because yeah. you know no no one's going to actually just be so focused that you know they don't do anything else but stick to the task yeah you know allow yourself to enjoy yeah um, allow yourself not to work sometimes yeah um, allow yourself to to take a day off yep um, allow yourself to relax and you know that way then at least the journey is not so painful do you specifically you know focus on on that sort of that area of your life like it's a, you know it's obviously you know um, as in work life balance uh, yeah absolutely um, yeah. tell us about that look work life balance to 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 anyone listening i think is probably the most important part of success for mm. me um, you know that's you know your daily um, routines and rituals that you know if, again from time to time it's okay not to do it every day mm. you know um, give you cut yourself some slack yeah don't be so hard on yourself I think that's that's that should be the way it should be done yeah you know you've got some people that are very diligent but what happens then is if you're too rigid with your approach and you're too methodical in your approach which is good habit is excellent we want habit yeah but you know too much overthinking and too much pressure on yourself will, will have the reverse effect at times. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I practice something the law, uh, known as the law of detachment, ah. right? So, you know, I try to understand that that's where I want to go, but I try to stay a little bit detached from the outcome. Yeah. You know why? Because, like, I want it, and when it comes, it'll come, Yeah. but I don't sort of say I have to have it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nine times out of ten, it doesn't come now. Yeah, it yeah. takes time. And also understand too that with with various levels of success, timing is important. In that the universe will offer it to you to you freely mm. when it knows you are ready for it. Oh, so true. Right? It's just like so how many times you sit there and you say, "Yeah, I want to do that deal," and you know it doesn't happen, and that's probably nothing to do with you. And more to do with something I like to refer to as the perfect accounting system yeah. in the universe, right? You know, and if it's if it's I for you, okay. So so That's something brilliant. I truly believe in is there's a perfect accounting system in the universe. Yeah. So you know you oh. can have it, but you can have it when it's ready for you or when you're ready for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's nothing worse than you know trying to catch a ball and you're not looking at the ball right yeah, yeah you're yeah. not looking at the guy throwing it yeah so the ball's not going to come to you necessarily or if it does yeah it's probably going to hit you in the head yeah but if you're in the middle of a game and you're prepared yeah chances are you're going to catch that that's ball. a great analogy man well, absolutely yeah, you know so like good. you need to be prepared right? yeah yeah and I, i've noticed and look we've we seem to be you know both of us have been um deeply interested in in this sort of thing in you know in our last sort of you know five years or so and is it something that you you know awareness and and sort of gratitude and 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 all of these important things is it something that you consciously sort of uh ha- have taught yourself and become interested in has it come naturally to you <clears throat> or Look, yeah there was a there was a i think it was an early evolution for me so mm. i can even go back to a specific date of may 19 1997 mm. when i really found this bit of consciousness um and you well, know a lot earlier than me yeah, look, and 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 it, and it came. Um, let's go back to another moxism. Yeah, uh, that the unconscious is the friend to he who is lonely, mm. and so you know, growing up, I was always feeling a little bit different. Um, you know, I I um, didn't necessarily connect with as many of the kids the way I would like to. I wasn't necessarily a great communicator at that time. I was a little bit shy and reserved and. Believe it or not, I'm shy wow. and reserved. Yeah, true story. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it affected me for a long time in my life, right? And so, you know, I couldn't I couldn't put my finger on it, you know, and, um, you know, whether it was in a relationship that, you know, I couldn't find or a friendship that I couldn't find or business success that I wanted to just sort of get so early, um, you know, and then, you know, one day I was um, I was driving. I rang my my middle sister, who happened to be in Marylands at the time. You know, Marylands. It's not far from where Moxham's real estate used to be. Um, and she was. Um, she said to me that she was um, around the corner from where I was actually driving. And I used to work in the family business of um, driving um, uh, underprivileged kids 
from home to school and school to home. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know so that. we, we my, my, my father had a business of about 20 vans that used to pick up um, these these underprivileged kids, some even partially disabled, whatever. Oh, wow. um, and we used to have that kind of a business via government. And, and, th- and that was kind of what I used to do in between running my architectural practice. So oh. I used to do that in the morning for a few hours, do architecture during the day. And then I used to do that again oh. in the evening and then architecture again, right? Wow. And um, my sister was um, at at her accountant's office and she said, I'm just splitting a business up. But we've just split up with our, our, our part, business partner in the plumbing business. And she said, come and say hello. So I walked in there and she was at a photocopier, photocopying these pieces of paper, but the same piece of paper nonstop. Subconsciously, I never had noticed it. But, you know, sort of after five or 10 minutes there, I sort of said, sis, what are you doing? You've been on the same piece of paper copying it like a hundred times. <clears throat> Look, and I'm, I'm, I'm not the most religious person in the world, but, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, um, you know, there's, to me, there's a higher power out there of mm. some sort. Mm. I just can't put my finger on it, right? Agreed. Yeah. And, um, and she said to me, oh, it's a prayer. I said, what do you mean? I said, what are you copying it for? She said, it's a prayer to St. Jude. And St. Jude is the patron saint of help. And, and I said, really? And she said, yeah. And I said, what do you do? She said, well, every time you have something that you want, you take this prayer, you follow this ritual, say the prayer nine times, take nine copies to the church every day, and you say it for nine days, and within nine days, it will come to fruition. Oh. You know, I'm not the most religious guy. I used to avoid going to church when my mum was there and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I thought, you know what, nothing else is kind of working out for me in my life. Give me 81 copies. <laughs> so I take these 81 copies. And um, and I start doing it ritually on for nine days, right? Um, <clears throat> so I wake up in the morning, methodically go do the school run in the morning, come back, do the prayer, walk up to the church, and I tell you, Jeff, it was the the most peaceful nine days of my life. Wow! That I would just walk up there and just just feel at peace because I think I had submitted to an external force that was. You know, gonna solve all my problems. That's beautiful, man. You know what I mean? That's and just so beautiful. So, dude, I'd do that every single day. Walk up to the church, walk back down to home. You get back into my architecture, do the scrolling in the afternoon, and you know, and, and that was what I did for like nine days. During that time, during the architecture phase of my day, I used to go to Auburn Council every day. Yeah, and I used to go and see a planner there, and I was doing this extension on a on a factory in Silverwater. And um, and I was, it was everything because the guy had promised me a five grand bonus right. if I got this approved. Yeah. Right? And all I had to do Huge. was drink. All I had to move the wall forward was two meters into the front setback. Never been done before, but, you know, Joe Abood fashion, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. So I'd go there every day. And every time I'd go there, as I was leaving, I'd run into a friend of mine, George. Huh. Happened first day, second day, third day. By the third day, he looked, pulls me up. He says, give me for a second. I said, what's up? He goes, man... You keep running into me every day. I think you're going to find me a site. Do you have any deals? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I've got deals. You know, he said, okay, next Monday I'm free. Why don't you come up to my house at Castle Hill? So, you know, true Joe Bid fashion. We just continue up on our day. That was probably day four or five of those prayers and whatever the case may be. Anyway, so it just, the, the days went and, you know, Monday came and I drove to his place. I walked into his home and I still remember walking down this long corridor I get to his office, which was situated outside of his master bedroom. I'm sitting there talking to him and I'm pitching. It was a site for the old squash courts in Ramsgate, oh. right? Um, and it was a development site, but it was an existing squash courts and it had an angle. We couldn't get into the cars. There was a right of carriageway you couldn't access. And you know, it was exactly what I do today. Yeah. And so I was pitching this deal to him. And then I noticed him. He's not even listening to me. He was just eyeballing me, staring at me, and he said to me, Joe, do you want to stop for a sec? I said, yeah, what's up? He said, I see a help sign from one side of your chest to the other. Are you okay? And I said, what do you mean? At that point, I hadn't, uh, nor here nor there, you know? Yeah. And I said, help? He said, yeah, man, you're the most tenacious guy. You work so hard. You're so, you seem so resilient, but nothing seems to be working out for you. I said, yeah. Wow. What is that? And he goes, let me explain a few things to you. Oh. So he then talks to me about, you know, spirituality. He shows me the, he try, tries to draw some parallels between spirituality and 
and and religion and psychology uh-huh. and you know various things, right? And I just started to relate, and wow. I said, "Wow, man, yeah. yeah, I always think that, oh. yeah, I always think that, right? Yeah, man, yeah, I agree." And then, before you know it, I turned around and I said, "Oh shit!" He goes, "He said, what's wrong?" I said, "It's day nine. Oh. and he goes, "Day nine, day nine of what?" And then I pulled it out of my pocket and I said, "Yeah, I've just been doing this for nine days," and you know. My prayers were answered, Jeff. Now, like I'm, most, like I said, in the, in the in the way that you like in a way that you would have never spiritually. Yeah. He 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 awakened my 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 being to you know what I now know today as consciousness. That's just such a great story. <laughs> it actually happened to me, man. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. Um, and cool. you know, so that's that's where it began for me, right? Right, yeah. and then from there. Reading books, you know, yeah. books like Psycho Cybernetics, Power of Positive Thinking. I'm just about to finish that book. There you go. Literally, I'm in the second last chapter. There I've you listened go. To it three um, times. Uh, uh, Vernon Howard, Mystic Path to Cosmic Power. I've spoken to you about that. I can give you a copy if you choose to. Um, you know, various books, A Seat of the Soul. Um, yes. You know, yes. Some, some amazing books that look. You know, I'm not the most read human being on the planet. I said, but you know, from time to time, it's amazing how you can grab one of those books. And anyone that's sitting out there, once you get into it, you could pick up a book at any moment and whatever you read at that time, from the middle of that book, right, you can just open it up and it'd have some relevance to your life at that moment. Oh, 100%. How many times would you do that now, right? And some of the books you could read 50 times, 100 times, it's okay. You don't need to read 100 books. No. But if you read one book 100 times, man, you get so much out of that, right? And Mystic Path for me is that book. Wow. I've got one. I'm going to pull it out of my briefcase. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, I love this subject so much. Um, We're going to have a short break. (laughs) Okay. And we're coming back. Yeah, good. Sounds good. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Good subjects. First, uh, our first episode, and so much stuff to talk about on that. Like you and I could talk all day. On, oh, absolutely. On, it, it, it really, you know, I've got so into it in later in life, and it is just. I, I wish it was. It was really. It should be just part of you know education for our kids. Mate, just, an, just another another Marxism, man. I just yeah. The more that you think you know, yeah. And once you realise how much you think you know, you then realise how much you don't know. Oh. Right? Because, man, it's infinite. It's infinite. Yes, man. That's, and and, that's and how can you even is. claim to know? <laughs> it's infinite. It so <laughs> is. It's like the more I get into it, the more I just want to learn more and more yeah, and man. more. Yeah, amazing. It's amazing. Mate, um, I wanted to actually talk about – this is what I wanted to open to talk about, but we, we went off on a wonderful tangent um, – So obviously, you know, we're in the property industry. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to talk about data centers. Yes. So, and you know, I'm sure you're not going to tell us all of your secrets, but I, I think um, I'm what I'm really interested in in hearing is look. It's it's I love the story actually how you got into it, but um, it's a very topical subject in the property industry at the moment, and as as the industry has been so has just been booming you know for 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 the last few years these micro sectors are becoming more and more sought after and you know where can people get onto that next big thing and you were very much an early adopter of of this and tell us look for for the listeners you know what what is a data center you and and you're on the property side of the data center tell us a little bit about that a few years ago, I decided to embark um, through my development director, came up with the idea of going to Harvard and doing an executive MBA. Mm. So I decided to um, embark on this executive MBA. By the way, I don't have a degree or a, um, or a certificate or a diploma in anything um, leading up to um, you know, all of the work that I've done. And he convinces me to go. So we, we head off there. And we get to Harvard and I'm sitting in a lecture room. First time I've sat in a lecture room in my life. Don't know what to expect. You're doing you're doing case studies. You're doing thirty or forty case studies a week. Um, How long was the course for? Uh, it's a two year period, roughly about two two and a half weeks every quarter over a two year period. You go there. Go there. Yeah, yeah. On site. Big commitment. Um, awesome commitment, man. Mm. You get to study and travel and meet awesome people. So AMPD X1X, big shout out to my class and um, 
you know, 36 students from 19 countries, Jeff Moxham. Is, um, I can is. solve, on my WhatsApp group, I can solve any problem in the world mm. with my 36 mates no from way. 19 countries, yeah? Wow. So if I said to you, you got a problem, and you say to me, how do I do it? And I'll give you a great example. Um, one of the dads at our school had a son in New York, and he said to me, man, my son's in New York, he's Aussie, went out on his own, tried to get a job, can't get him on. I said, give me a minute. I get on the, the WhatsApp group. I ring a good friend of mine, John Silich, who's a um, massive, probably the leading luxury home builder in Colorado, right, in Aspen, okay, does all the major oh, homes, Silich Homes, to me about him. right, yeah. yeah, and um, I ring Silich. I said, Silich, um, got, a, got a mate, his son's in New York, he's stuck, he can't get a job. He goes, give me five minutes. Five minutes later, he rings an Aussie group of guys that have got a construction company in New York. Fifteen minutes later, the kid's got a job. Right, happened. True story. Um, so you know, I'm there and I'm, I'm at university in in Harvard University in Boston, sitting in a lecture. Deputy chair of Microsoft is the lecturer, and he opens up the board. And on the board, he's got the words. It could be a moxism, by the way. This <laughs> I'm liking that I, word moxism. I love it. Um, is data is the new oil, and that's what he writes on the board. Jeff Moxham, I looked at that phrase and I couldn't get my eyes off it. Like, what do you it mean was, data is the new oil, it right? Sang, it sang to you. Wow, man, it's like resonated, right? I was like, what? <laughs> oil? You know, everybody wants to have their own oil field, right? You know, that would be, you know, if you were a Texan and you were born on oil, you know, you've watched those movies, right? You, that's where success is. When you talk success, especially financial success, you think oil, you know, you, you, you think those kind of things, right? And, he, and on the board is data is the new oil. I'm fascinated by that at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm taken by it. He starts talking to me about the rate of technology, about evolution and evolving. Man, it was a spiritual conversation mm. about the growth of a company. And if you didn't um, evolve with technology, you'd become irrelevant. Mm. Exactly those words. Mm. If you don't evolve with technology, you'll become irrelevant. Mm. Well, Jeff, I heard that. I don't want to become irrelevant. All I'm thinking about, I need to get back to Sydney. I need to re-strategize. I've got to restructure. What the hell am I going to do to stay relevant? It became a problem for me. Wow. Right? So those are the two things that brought me to, you know, back to Sydney. Got some of my corporate advisors or advisors or friends and whatever. We workshop for a couple of days. And then we said, okay, what we need to do is we need to be the property solution for the data center industry. Mm-hmm. Really difficult to do. Right, why? Really difficult to do because um, while I, you seem to think I'm an early starter in that, right? I'm only five years into it. Yep. They've been doing data centers for 20-something years. Yep. So, um, you know, really we're a late starter. You know, yep. you've got okay. some of the biggest hyperscale um, operators in the world and in Australia here that yep. are already, you know, hit, hit and run. Yeah. But um, we've been able to... Um, you know, position ourselves a little bit differently, solutioning for, you know, in, in places where they would need data centers. And, you know, we're in some heavy discussions. So I can't talk too much about yeah, the detail. Course. But, you know, da- the, the demand for data today is greater than the demand for housing. You can relate to this. And we've got a housing crisis. Mm. So if you've got a housing crisis and the demand for data is greater than the demand for housing, mm. there's a data storage crisis. Yes. So that's – so – data centers for, for our listeners it's a it's a it's a storage house for big yeah, data it's a big big fridge that you build massive cooling systems takes a lot of power I'll give you an example we've got a seventy five thousand square meter facility in rouse hill that's da approved and we've got 100 megawatts of power allocated for that wow. so you can't even get those allocations of power that's your first problem so that's part of the problem that you're talking about one of the problems the other yep. problem is that there's a lot of risk factors to take in right you can't have derailment of rail so it can't be next to a rail line you can't be near a freeway because a car might fly off and you know, crash into this thing. Yeah, bushfires an issue. Flooding's an issue. Everything. Really? Flight path is an issue. Can't because, be in a flight path because that. Da- I mean, that's just everyone's. It, it's just you. Can't, Imagine that yeah. Google is your yeah. tenant, or, or yeah. Microsoft, or Facebook, or you know, one of these guys is your tenant. Yeah, and then you get downtime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know, like, yeah, your cloud is basically stored in these buildings. So this is where the cloud is. This is the cloud. So listeners, did you hear that? This is, have you ever wondered where the cloud is? This is where the cloud is. The cloud is inside a big, big, (laughs) could be like a big box, factory, office building. They come in many shapes and forms. And, um, you know, we're we're now have, have been embarking on doing 
hyperscale data centers. Mm. We're also doing edge data centers out, out in the regions. Yep. So that's all about improving latency. So your foray into that, so it was the journey that, you know, initially was, oh yeah, okay, I'll go over there and be part of Harvard and, and, and study. And there was an inkling that, you know, thought it might be a good thing and, and lo and behold, you know, look what look what you stumble across. On that, you know, for for our listeners and the, the younger listeners, the value of being open to opportunity, the importance of investing in yourself and in that case, you know, it could be study, it could be you know, uh, investing in yourself in various ways, mindset, you know, tell us about your thoughts on on that subject. Okay, Marxism. Yes. Good luck. The definition of good luck yeah. is preparedness meeting opportunity. My, speaking of Marxism, fa- coined by my father, the <laughs> originator of the Marxism, he's always said to me when I was young, you create your own good luck. 100%, right? So... You know, a part of that preparation, you know, that preparedness that we talk about is is preparing with oneself. Yeah. Right? So that's working on yourself. Um, you know, it could be studying if that's where you want to be. By the way, when it comes to studying, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't fortunate enough to be able to afford to, you know, go to university. I had to work and, you know, just couldn't afford to do that. So you just sort of like build this resilience and, and this motivation to succeed and then you're going to stop at nothing and you just need to keep going. Yeah. So, you know, and then you just work harder and harder and harder and that's just what replaces this, you know, this part of this preparation that you never got to um, um, uh, experience at university, let's call it, and then you start to, you know, be conditioned by life Mm. and by experience. Mm. And so, like, you know, back to study, you know, like, I think it's a great thing. I think you build um, really good, um, you know, habits to be able to, you know, ensure that you, you know, continue with everything, continue through and finish and follow through on everything you need to do. Like, you know, being organized and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff, which is really important. And that's, I think, what educa- the education system tries to teach you. Yeah. It teaches you that habitual yeah. um, uh, process that you follow, you know, because like you set a goal, if you don't follow, like you can set a goal to want to, you know, buy a property. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. You gotta break that down. Yeah. You gotta start going on the real estate.com every day. Yeah. You gotta know what kind of property you're looking for. Yeah. You might find one. Yeah. You gotta go and see it. You gotta review it. You gotta Take grab a steps. contract. You know, there's a hundred steps in between the goal and what I lo- I wanna actually share with everybody that, you know, your business or where you are today started as merely a thought, a split second one day. Oh man, let's this the right? whole subject of thoughts. It's you know what I mean. So you know, you know, one day I wanted thought. to become a, you know a property developer, and it was merely just a thought. Yes, a split second that could have gone either way. Yes, and then you took that split second, and then you built something through that around that with that. Yep. You know, and the, and then you are here today because of the decisions that you have made leading up to today. Yep. Right. The very experiences that you've experienced, the things that you've done along the way. So, you know, you need to have your your your, your macro goal, you know, what is the grand yep. plan? Yep. And then you've got to have a whole heap of small steps in between that help you build towards that. Yeah. And so whether it's, you know, whether study is a part of that, whether, you know, if you're not good at studying, it's okay. Yep. Right? You know, um, don't be so hard on yourself again. I go back to that. We started talking that in the beginning that you know it's okay that if you're not that good as the guy next to you because let's face it yeah. the guy next to you just might have a photographic memory and you're yeah. just not as good at, as him yeah. at remembering stuff that's it that doesn't mean you're less intelligent than that person that just means he's got a god-given talent that allows him to remember a hell of a lot more than you can remember yeah that doesn't mean he's smarter than you yeah doesn't mean he's 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 more clever yeah that just means he's got a good memory yeah and if you don't have one that's okay too yeah because then you just need to manage that memory process differently yeah does it mean you need to write it down more often i mean how often do you really need to remember everything off the top of your head mm. the way that they push us at school so yeah. you yeah. know i've got i've had a real problem with that process yeah you know i just think that they should really build on the children's strengths mm. and really um, build quality um, people in various industries based on people's strengths yeah and avoid them doing things because they have certain weaknesses yeah you know and not just a one-size-fits-all yeah. that just covers everybody 
I wrote a thesis on it in 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 Harvard, and that was my final piece oh, wow. about building a utopian world where you know you could work and study at the same time. So rather than go to university, you actually get taught in the job. Oh wow! Don't go to school. Yeah. What for? Teach me that. Teach me what I'm good at and what I'm passionate about on the job. <laughs> By the time I'm 16, yeah. I'm so good at what I do. Yeah. That's how you're going to get trade. We're running out of trades people. Yeah. Right. We're running out of skilled personnel. Yeah. You know, and there's an evolution at the moment of skill requirements where even the zonings of properties don't match the skills that are required. So, you know, there's some of this new technology that's out there at the moment that doesn't have a course. Let me give you an example. You can't get a diploma in anything to do with teaching about computers anywhere. You just, there's, there's, no, there's no diploma course. You've got to go to university to learn, a, to, 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 to get a degree in computers. Wow. Right? I don't know exactly what they're called, but I'm just, I'm using that category. Like information technology. Yeah, so at the sort of moment, that. what we're doing with the indigenous community is we've been able to, um, through a group that I'm involved in, been able to bring the threshold down from 18 to 16 with the Microsofts and the Apples of this world and coming up with, um, a, a lower threshold for the younger generation, especially the indigenous community, mm. to be able to step into com- learning about computers and technology, mm. and then 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 running these courses for the indigenous community to be able to learn how to work in this field and therefore um, deal with us in this new data center and tech space. Mm. Right? It's it's not me. It's a company mm. I'm involved in heavily. But you know that's what we're requiring. We're requiring on the job training, guys. Mm. We're not. We don't. We don't need to just. Um, run the 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 the, the normal uh, tertiary processes that we follow every day. I mean, some of the stuff that they do and they, they put our kids through. Mm. You know, like some kids are just not good at it. Yeah, right. The kid ends up a mess. Yeah, with an, an, you know an, an, an emotional bundle of nerves yeah. by the time he's ready. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a problem, guys. Yeah, you know, we've problem. got a, we've got an issue here. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and it's unfortunate that they're not dealing with it properly. Yeah. and it's it's just a one size fits all thing. Yeah, yeah. I hope I haven't digressed off the topic. No, you know. no it is very. Uh, but you know what? I think subject. everybody out there just needs to remember that it's okay if you're not that good at it and it's okay not to be okay. Because that's who you are and that's, you know, that's just a beautiful thing. I tell tell my children every day, you know what? I don't have a problem with what you do and in how much you do. I care about how much effort you put into it. And if you're not really good at studying, that's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll work yeah. it out. Yeah. Right? There's going to be another yeah. answer for you. I remember talking to you, actually. We were talking about our kids, and I was talking about uh, my son, and, um, you know, he was interested in this and not interested in that. And, and I, I remember something interesting you said. You said out of your out of your three kids, like, one will be outdoors and at the park all day, and the other one just not interested. And, and like, and that's okay. You yeah, know? man. And it's like, I can't force him. Exactly. And I think forcing him to do something he doesn't want to do is the <laughs> intrinsic issue we totally, have. Totally. You know, that's like forcing these kids every day to go out there and do things that they don't enjoy. Yeah. Like, of course he's going to become an emotional bundle of nerves yeah, in the yeah, end, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's why we've got the psychological issues that our children have. This is huge. They create a problem. There's... Um, um, issues with their self confidence, with their self esteem. So this all massive. comes from the system that's one size fits all. Yeah. You know, yeah. built to their strengths, guys. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. a classic example yeah. of just going off on my tangent and learning. I mean, I came to you and said, Jeff, can you find me an option? Yeah. You said to me, nobody does options. Yeah. I built an empire <laughs> yeah. on options, but nobody does options apparently. I don't think Jeff. I said nobody. I think I don't think I, think I don't do No, I'm, no, I'm yeah, just I saying. Know. You yes. know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. But so like, you know, yeah. you've got to find your niche. Yeah. You've got to find your value proposition to the world. Yeah. Right? And if you find that value proposition to the world, yeah. I guarantee success. Well, that's brilliant, man. Mate, um, so much wonderful stuff to talk about. You know what I love about doing podcasts? Like I've known you for a long time, and yeah. I've learned some really beautiful stuff about you today. Yeah, man. Um, so thank you for coming. Um, I feel like I'm closer to you um, than I have been over 25 years, so that's a beautiful thing. Thank you for your time. Mate, thank you we're, for having we're, me. We're being wound up. Okay, um, <laughs> right. And, um, uh, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff here to share with our listeners. Awesome, man. So, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for having me here. Um, it's been great chatting to you as usual and mate uh, yeah. until we meet again yeah more discussions on these subjects thanks mate thanks man thank you